Hope everyone's doing well out there. It's Avery. Today I want to share some brands that I really think are worth taking a look at. This is Brands That You Should Know. Today's video is made possible thanks to Squarespace. It's an all-in-one platform if you want to build a blog, web store, anywhere in between. Today we're going to be covering some up-and-coming brands, some brands that just deserve more recognition for what they're doing, so hopefully I can help get the name out there. Really, any brand that has a stronghold in diversity, sustainability, cultural awareness, and no sacrifice at all in terms of design. Here's how we're going to do it because there's no way I can fit all of the designers in this one video, but for the ones that do, we're going to start off with menswear and hit the smallest to the largest and or oldest and then I'll just throw out a few women's names with brief descriptions in case any of you are interested in that. The first brand is Ernest W. Baker. This is actually a design duo from America and Portugal. So you get this very interesting amalgamation of Americana and Europe. And I just want to go ahead and show you the product photos and the images from this available Fall Winter 18 collection. And then you'll know why I fell in love with this when I saw this collection. So, ready for it. Grotesque Americana, really Lynchian, very surreal. They bodied these product images. Ernest W. Baker is one of the founder's grandfathers, and you can especially tell here that these look like word or these look like items taken out of his wardrobe. The whole idea for this collection was a man in the 1950s working in advertising in Detroit and then reimagining those items, applying it to today, and then also having the two separate viewpoints of the founders to reimagine uh, Ernest W. Baker's wardrobe. So Spring Summer 19 is also really interesting. The imagery is beautiful and evocative and dreamy all in one. So definitely check it out, especially if you're a David Lynch fan. These guys deserve some more followers, some more attention on them, and I think they'll get it because this is gorgeous, gorgeous work. If I didn't mention it, they're based in Antwerp now, so maybe that'll help you guys out in Europe if you're shopping online. But there you go, I'll link everything, website, social, down in the description. The next designer we're going to talk about today is Nicholas Daly. So this is all of you guys out in London or any of you jazz enthusiasts out there. Nicholas Daly is a really fun yet strong and timeless voice for the black community that is definitely underrepresented represented, represented in the fashion community. Super awesome designer. Fall Winter 18 is Red Clay, which is the amazing, brilliant Freddie Hubbard record. I'm gonna link that down below for you guys on Spotify, Apple Music, whatever, because that is killer. But Nicholas Daly for this collection was all of these bright colors, but paired with traditional English uh, structuring and materials like tweeds, a lot of suiting. You guys know the deal. Spring Summer 19 is gorgeous. It's a little more down to earth, a lot of linens that I'm in love with. So definitely check that out if you're interested. If you like my style, Spring Summer 19 might be a better fit for you. I'll link both down below though. Another thing about Spring Summer 19, which I think gives a really good view of Daily as a whole, is that it's not only about music, but also his family, which has such strong ties in music. It's referencing his parents who started one of the first reggae clubs in Scotland, and also his dad who was a DJ. So it has some fun prints and good references there, some really awesome references there, but also just like some gorgeous plain linen jackets and things like that. Daily is sort of on a similar timeline to like a Yang Li or Kiko Kostadnov, which I also definitely recommend you checking out. Yang has a really cool track record, dropping out of Central St. Martins and working under Raf. Kiko, you guys probably know him by now. Beautiful stuff. That might be something that you want to look for for sales coming up this fall winter. Is some of their stuff going on sale? But Nicholas Daly is creating some beautiful stuff. All of his I want to say runway shows, but I should just say presentations are more experiences. And he works with a lot of awesome jazz artists. He's dressed Sons of Kemet, things like that. So Nicholas Daly, check him out. Link in the description. The next label that I want to discuss with you guys is Telfar. So Telfar Clemens is by no means a newcomer to the fashion scene. Pretty much the exact opposite. But what it seems like is 
his values that he's portrayed through his clothing and presentations, such as diverse casting or see now, buy now, making runway shows more of an experience, more of a presentation, is something that he's been doing since the early 2000s. And maybe it's just that the mainstream is more ready to accept those values. Maybe it's more chic. So many different factors. It seems like it's moving in the right direction, hopefully in an authentic way. But there were also changes internal at Telfar when Babak came in as creative director, hopefully I'm saying his name right, he sort of influenced Telfar Clemens to play the game that is fashion, that is the unfortunate game of fashion. On the way to CFDA, we really did actual runway shows so that people can say, oh, it's fashion. And as soon as we went the fashion front, we're like, okay, no more runway shows. And it seems to be doing really well, sticking with those core values, which I love so much and which is why I think they deserve more recognition. Being a, let's say, fashion label, but coming at it from an angle of just being a clothing brand. Being a clothing brand for not you, but everybody. And on top of that quote, Clemens has also said that no matter what, it's still the beginning, so hopefully I can include the whole Telfar team and label and everything in this video. Also, this collection was so rooted in Americana in the 50s and 70s, and with Telfar's values that were so ahead of the curve in fashion, and now prodding at this style that's so prevalent today and is so important in our history. Um, it's just an, impor an important pivot point for them. They're gaining a lot of retail space, so hope that continues, and it might be a brand that you wanna follow. So there you go, hit the links down below. Now we're gonna quickly run through some lesser known women's wear labels. This list is super long. So I think there's just a few here, and if you guys wanna see another video, of course, hit me down below because for men's and women's, there's so much great stuff out there, and it's great to um, be able to have a platform to share it with you guys. But the first brand I wanna talk about is The Situationist. The, oh, Kaylee, I forgot to make my joke about saying Staatsballett. Situationist remind me of it. But you guys should check out The Situationist if you want to, based off these images, because this is a really strong brand coming out of Georgia. Tbilisi Fashion Week, if you guys aren't familiar, has become sort of a really hot spot, a trendy fashion week across the globe, for lack of a better term. So you might just want to look into Tbilisi Fashion Week. Kaylee and I really want to go sometime. Uh, but the Situationist has some really, really powerful stuff. And I just want to bring that label up in case you wanted to see some more Georgian labels out there. The next one that I want th wanted to mention was Ioannis, which I believe is the Greek pronunciation of this. And Ioannis is a German designer that has that sort of masculine women's wear, but I think it's still pretty chic. Kaylee and I saw this in a PR showroom in Berlin, and we absolutely love this vest. He has these gloves that he's made a few different models of that sort of puff up around your elbow. And there's some really, really awesome stuff. So you guys might want to check Ioannis and hopefully it becomes a little bit more wider available on the market. The next label is right up your alley if you want something that is super bright and full of attitude and also has some awesome roots in Asian culture. So the recent work from Asai, did I say the brand name yet? It's Asai. The recent work of the brand has been juxtapositioning these very luxury, ethically made, but still bright colors and fun and flamboyant, like I've said, um, dresses and tops and everything in between and delivering them in takeout boxes. So that's their big thing right now, which I think is an awesome way of securing a market. I'm not sure if that really makes sense, but a lot of brands rely on t-shirts and logoing that to be there selling points that funds their more artistic work and other things of that nature. The next one is Nanushka. They are based out of Budapest and I'm throwing this on the list because they have some amazing vegan leather stuff. Pants, jackets, accessories, just a ton of awesome leather alternatives. And of course the rest of the clothes are super cool too, but I wanted to include them on here because of sustainability efforts and ethics and things such as that. The last one that I want to share is Rok, which is a Korean designer. The images are beautiful. They've been working since 2016. 
I think I have the designer's name written down. Roke Wong, who has worked at Celine and Louis Vuitton and is now has this beautiful imagery and all these gorgeous clothes. A really, really cool brand. That's it for the brands that we are going to be discussing today. Hit me down in the comments if you guys have any questions, if you guys wanna see me do this video again because there are so many brands out there that I'd love to use this platform to help promote that I think really deserve it. Also, if you guys have any recommendations, definitely send some up and coming designers my way. I'd love to hear from you. And yeah, hit the description if you want to see the links to the runway shows and the collections I mentioned and maybe more about the designers too. I'll link them down below to shop and all of that. Also down in the description, you will find a link to get 10% off of Squarespace, the sponsor for this video. The link is squarespace.com slash Avery Ginsburg. It's an awesome platform that's really intuitive with no sacrifice to professionalism. You can use it to host domains, to build your portfolio if you guys are going off to school or to get a job for photography, whatever else, to do a web store, anything and everything in between. So I'll leave that link down below. You can also hit my portfolio that's linked down there if you want to see an example. And yeah, that's it. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and making it possible. And until next time, everyone, have a good day. I'll see you in the next video. Peace, guys. Take care.